Looks like we're inside the gaseous planet of Bacteria Obiga. And whew, it is gaseous. Smells like my Uncle Jim in here. But fortunately, there's no Uncle Jim or any other foul-smelling humans, because this planet has a strict bacteria-only policy. In fact, you can think of the planet we're inside of as a single bacterium. But just because it's a bacterial planet doesn't mean that it can't be invaded. And eesh, those invader ships are getting pretty close. I've got a feeling that bacteria-only policy is about to be broken. Unfortunate for this planet, but a phage invasion might just be the perfect setting to cover the lytic and lysogenic cycles of bacteriophages, the viruses that infect bacteria. Or you can just call them phages for short. We'll start with the event that's common to both of these cycles. Ah, it looks like a ship is docking now. But notice how it's staying on the outer surface of the planet. That's because bacteriophages don't ever actually enter the host cells they infect. Instead, they use a structure called a tail sheath to inject their genetic material into the host cell cytoplasm. Kind of like that ship injecting a blue DNA worm inside this planet. Now, while this particular invader happens to be a DNA alien worm, keep in mind that the genetic material of bacteriophages can be DNA or RNA, which explains why this orange RNA alien worm is being injected by a second ship. With its genetic material inside the cell, the phage can undergo the remaining steps of either the lytic or lysogenic cycle. A number of factors, including the habitability of the host cell, dictate which cycle occurs. And as a note, not all bacteriophages can undergo both of these cycles. Some are only able to replicate using the lytic cycle. And speaking of the lytic cycle, let's start there. In the lytic cycle, the phage's genetic material replicates in the host cell cytoplasm. Not unlike this DNA alien worm about to burst a vessel duplicating itself. Some of this duplicated genetic material is fated to become the genomes for a new generation of viruses, and other strands are used to synthesize the building blocks for new viruses, that is, viral proteins. Hence the proteinaceous purple space grenades nestled on the ground here. Once the genetic material is copied a whole bunch of times and a slew of viral proteins are synthesized, we have all the necessary pieces to make an entire army of bacteriophages. Ah, <sighs> the sweet, sweet sounds of progress and imminent destruction. This alien assembling a phage ship should remind you that in the lytic cycle, bacteriophages are assembled inside the host cell. And I'm not talking assembly of just a few of them. Trust me, this guy is just getting started. Once this planet accumulates enough of these ships, kablowie! Full-blown host planet destruction! These ships ripping open the planet's surface are a vivid reminder that the operative word for lytic cycle is lysis. See, the name of the game is to build up enough viral progeny, and once a critical mass is reached, the baby viruses burst through the host cell and enter a new world. Eventually, the viral progeny mature and go on to infect new host cells. But bacteriophages aren't always out to kill their hosts. Sometimes they just want to harmlessly live inside of them. Which brings us to the lysogenic cycle. And nothing says harmless quite like a friendly game of golf. This phage DNA alien, who I must say has become quite the pro, should remind you of a prophage. A prophage is the phage's genetic material that's integrated into the genome of the host cell. Which is why this viral golf pro is hitting the greens with those bacteria-looking locals. Truly the pro league of foreign invasion. Despite this being quite the active game of golf, the prophage is actually not active. It isn't used to make proteins and it doesn't drive production of new phages. However, the lysogenic cycle still serves as a way for bacteriophages to reproduce. Once the prophage is incorporated into the host cell genome, it's replicated along with the host DNA when the host cell divides. That's why an identical round of viral and bacterial golf is being played in a clone of this planet. Uh, did I say this pro was harmless? I meant to say he's harmless if he's fraternizing with the locals. The second he breaks away from his group, it's bad news for the host planet. This golf pro inching his way to the lytic side of the scene should remind you that the prophage can be released from the host cell's genome and trigger the steps of the lytic cycle. Yup, that means DNA replication, protein synthesis, phage assembly, and kablawi, lysis of the host cell. A lysogenic to lytic transition can happen when the host cell becomes less habitable, such as when there's a scarcity of nutrients for the host or if the host becomes exposed to toxins. Pfft, poor form. Pretty sure you're supposed to yell, four before you exploit a planet. Let's do a quick recap to forget this golfer's transgressions. 
Bacteriophages infect host cells by injecting their genetic material, which can be DNA or RNA, into the host cell cytoplasm. In the lytic cycle, phage DNA is replicated and viral proteins are synthesized using host cell ribosomes. And then, progeny viruses are assembled inside the host cell. Late in the lytic cycle, phages lyse the host cells so they can be released and infect new cells. In the lysogenic cycle, the prophage is integrated into the host cell genome and is replicated when the host cell replicates. In the presence of certain conditions, the prophage can be released from the host genome and revert to the lytic cycle. And that does it for the lytic and lysogenic cycles of bacteriophages. Now, I'm going to go see if I can't invade the clubhouse bar before I sneak onto the back nine. See ya!